Alabama's WVUA News at 10. And good Monday evening, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. He made Alabama a championship caliber program once again, and now Alabama is making him the highest paid coach in the country. Nick Saban received a raise today that will elevate his annual salary well above $5 million, and the coach also agreed to an extension, which he says means he will finish out his career at Alabama. Sports Director Gary Harris up first tonight with this story and what has Tide fans talking. Well, you know, $5 million plus is a lot of money for yes. head football coach. Kirby Smart, for instance, defense quarter making 950000 John, and that's a big announcement. But what has people buzzing is, is not really the contracts themselves, the extensions, the money, or anything like that. Rather, what has uh, West Alabama and the entire state, for the most part, singing a rejoiceful tune tonight is what Nick Saban says that new deal represents for Alabama. The acceptance of this extension expresses, you know, our commitment, my commitment, Terry and I's commitment, our family's commitment to the University of Alabama um, for the rest of our career. Um, we made that decision, you know, after the season um, when other people were interested. That's right. You heard it right here. There were others that came calling following the national championship game. But Saban not only got a raise today, but also an extension. And the contract now goes through the 2019 season, and the coach will earn just over $5.3 million next year, and that's just for starters. In addition, he has other incentives and a built-in raise every season thereafter. Bottom line, Saban is now the highest-paid coach in the country at any public university. The Board of Trustees approved Saban's deal today, and they also gave raises to most of the assistant coaches. I think it's imperative that we keep continuity and that we have the opportunity to uh, be competitive salary-wise with you know, other schools who are trying to hire our coaches. Um, it doesn't really matter what my opinion is or anybody else's opinion. The market is what it is. And if we're not willing to pay that to the best people that we have, they're not going to be here. As I stated earlier, defensive coordinator Kirby Smart, who's been mentioned for head coaching jobs in the SEC in the past, will be the highest paid assistant on Saban's staff. He'll make $950,000 annually. The board also gave other assistants pay raises as well. And they also approved the contracts of new offensive coordinator Doug Nussmeyer and new linebackers, outside linebackers coach Lance Thompson. John? Gary, we've heard Saban say time and time again that he wanted to stay at Alabama, that this was his last stop on his career train, but this seemed more forceful tonight. Yeah, absolutely. It? He's been asked about it in the past, and he's made it sound positive that he would beat Alabama, but he never said for sure. And tonight, really, John, without prodding, uh, when this announcement came out about the contract extensions and the pay raises, he forcefully said this, you know, Terry and I have talked about it, his wife Terry, this is where we want to finish our career. We're going to close it out at Alabama. So a real positive uh, Note tonight for Alabama football fans everywhere. It looks like Nick Saban is here for the long term. Good news for Tide fans. Gary Harris starting us off tonight. Gary, thank you very much. In other news, it's called Florida versus the Department of Health and Human Services. But Alabama is one of the states joining Florida in challenging the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. Some opponents are labeling the new health care measure as Obamacare. The United States Supreme Court is hearing the case this week. WVUA's Travis Leader tells us what both sides are saying, including the view from the governor's mansion. President Obama signed the bill into law, and now the law is being reviewed by the U.S. Supreme Court. Justice Ginsburg defends the individual mandate and says it's a regulation, and individuals are not choosing to pay a fee for not being insured. You're trying to suggest that the statute says, well, it's your choice, either buy insurance or pay a, penal or, or, or pay a fee. That shouldn't be the way the statute reads, that it should instead be a regulatory command and a penalty attached to that command. Justice Breyer is also defending the health care plan, and Focus he argues taxes have to come with a law mandating health care. And I know you point to certain sentences that talk about taxes within the code. Right. Uh, and uh, this is not attached to a tax. It is attached to a health care requirement. Right. Governor Robert Bentley is a doctor who once performed private practice. He says the bill will have negative consequences similar to former federal health care plans. We're going to have a shortage of physicians, especially physicians who will not take the insurance, just like many physicians now will not take Medicare. Yet the governor is still in favor of reform. There are parts of the bill that I think are good, like pre-existing conditions, uh, and, and I think that everyone hopefully will have a right to buy health insurance. Uh, that's why we need to allow health insurance to be sold across state lines. 
uh, and we need more people writing health insurance in the state of Alabama, and that's what I'm for. Again, Travis Leader reporting tonight. Bentley says he will wait to see what the Supreme Court rules on the federal law before he asks the state to take action on potential reforms. The governor also stopped by Bryant-Denny Stadium tonight to address UA students about matters of faith. He spoke to The Huddle, a University of Alabama Christian organization. Alabama First Lady Diane Bentley, new UA Chancellor Robert Witt, and dozens of students attended the gathering. I believe that we should be grateful for having such a wonderful governor to help lead our state. I feel like he touched a lot of good points on um, growing up in like a, you know, growing up in a, in a very religious environment and knowing how to follow God's word and you know, knowing just to trust in him and he'll lead the way. Meanwhile, other news concerning Bentley tonight, and today the governor's Medicaid commissioner, Bob Mullins Jr., resigned after only 14 months on the job. Mullins announced his resignation earlier today. He was a physician in Valley, Alabama for more than 37 years and a personal friend of the governor. Mullins came into the job with a clinical background but says he lacks the skills needed to tackle the budget issues facing the agency. The governor recently cut spending 10.6% because of the state budget problems, and the agency could face more reductions when the new fiscal year begins October 1st. And also tonight, the new Tuscaloosa County Superintendent will make no less in salary than outgoing Superintendent Dr. Frank Costanzo. Now, that decision came tonight from the county school board. They set the minimum salary at just under $138,000. There was some reservations with school board members. Some were afraid if the minimum was placed at what was once Dr. Costanzo's salary, top-tier candidates would shy away. Superintendents are being paid a pretty good amount above what Dr. Costanzo was making. And I think they were hesitant because they didn't want to send a message, uh, you know, that they were not willing to consider uh, a higher salary. Although a salary floor is now in place, Ward says there will not be a salary ceiling advertised when the job goes on the market. As national outrage continues to grow over the shooting of Trayvon Martin, many people are starting to take a look at their state's own version of the Stand Your Ground law. Alabama is just one of 28 states which has the controversial law, which says if an individual reasonably feels that he or she is being threatened, then that person is justified to defend him or herself by the use of deadly force. However, some people, such as attorney Joel Sogel, are now saying that the vagueness of the law can create a dangerous situation. Uh, I do think that this kind of allows people to use deadly force when it's not necessary. The idea always was that you could only use deadly force when a person was in danger, okay? The way this law reads now, if someone's committing a burglary at the house next door to you, you have a right to kill them. Um, that's different. And, and yeah, I think that's a situation that can be used in some awkward and some bad situations. Sogo says the best thing to do if you see something suspicious happening is to simply call police. Well, in other news, gas prices continue to rise across the country. And with no end in sight, WVUA's Taylor Sanders took to the streets to see how drivers are changing their habits. Because gas is so high, I mean, I have to wait till Friday to actually fill up because I'm from Birmingham, so... The drive back and forth, it's a lot, a lot of gas. I mean, I know the people in Europe, for example, they have to pay a lot more than we do. And they, conti they continue to pay if they're going to go to work in places like that. They pretty much have to. But they're lucky enough to have trains and other modes of transportation that we don't have. We're pretty much stuck with our cars. And they're not alone. For many people in West Alabama, filling up at 375 per gallon is hard to live with. It's kind of rough, you know, because I'm retired. And it's you know the words so, and, and you know I, I don't get my little income once a month, so you kind of have to scratch it around, you know, month to month. Then you all, oh, you know, your bills, you got to pay them and like that. So it's kind of rough. Three seventy five is really somebody need to do something, you know. <laughs> but as prices continue to rise to almost four dollars a gallon, people are finding alternate ways to get more bang for their buck. So I basically just ride the shuttle to class and only drive when I really have to. Gas prices in Aliceville are a lot higher than they are here in Tuscaloosa, so I try and fill up 
when I come to Tuscaloosa as often as I can. Well, I usually try to come someplace like this where the gas is a little bit cheaper and not having a car that has high mileage, that, that helps too. Reporting for The Pump, I'm Taylor Sanders for WVUA News.